So, I've had this MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro CPU for a while now, and apart from daily driving it for a month and a half, showing how mid macOS is as an operating system, I haven't really used it all that much. But of course, the real goal of getting this very expensive device was to see how well Linux could run on it, which brings us to today's video. We're going to install Asahi Linux on this thing and see what works, what doesn't work yet and how usable it is in its current state. So grab a cup of your favorite beverage and let's see if modern Apple hardware can be a good choice to run Linux in 2023. And let's see if today's sponsor can be of use to you as well. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, which is a great tool to stream any operating system, desktop or application straight to your web browser. They just released version 1.14, which adds translations for 243 languages, along with a completely redesigned administrator user interface to streamline administrative workflows. Additional updates include support for local webcams and printers, plus the ability to persist your data to cloud storage drives, like Google Drive, Nextcloud or OneDrive, along with saving your persistent profile to S3 block storage. These updates make it easier than ever to host on-demand access to your desktops and applications. The Chasm Workspaces Community Edition can be self-hosted, or they also have a cloud SaaS subscription. So to learn more about Chasm Workspaces, click the link in the description below. So first, the distro. It's Asahi Linux. You can't currently run any Linux distro you want on Apple Silicon hardware. While basic support for the CPU is baked in recent Linux kernel versions, most of the hardware in a Mac isn't supported yet. But thankfully, some insanely good developers have created Asahi Linux. It's Arch Linux with some super bleeding edge drivers to support the newest MacBooks and desktop Macs from M1 to M2. And of course, there's also Fedora Asahi Remix, which is Fedora plus all the patches and drivers from Asahi inside. But I thought I would give a shot to the source material first. If you want a dedicated video about Fedora Asahi, let me know and I plan that for next month. Now, what's interesting is that Asahi Linux is just a reverse engineering effort. Apple doesn't publish specifications or open source code on how their stuff works. They haven't locked the bootloader on recent Macs, but they also don't really officially support installing any other OS than Mac OS. So the mad Asahi devs have taken upon themselves to reverse engineer everything and they've managed it pretty well already. So let's see exactly how well. Now, installing Asahi Linux is a simple process. You just run a single terminal command. There is no ISO to download or graphical installer. You just run a command in the macOS terminal. What it will do is download an install script and run it. It will actually create a dual boot and it won't completely replace macOS. So you can try it without worrying too much about making your Mac unusable. Although your Mac probably runs macOS right now, which I would argue makes it unusable, but maybe that's just me. Asahi supports all M1 machines for now, except the Mac Studio. And you will need about 60 gigs of storage because macOS requires a lot of free space for future updates. And Asahi leaves that available so you're not stuck in the future. It gives you a choice for the desktop you want. You get the default Asahi desktop, which is Arch Linux for ARM with Plasma, but you can also get a minimal OS without a graphical environment or a minimal UEFI environment. So you can try any other Linux distro. Although, as I said previously, none really have good support, but maybe from Fedora Asahi Remix. You also get to pick the size of the partition, of course, and then the installer starts resizing it and will start the install proper. It will also ask a few questions along the way, like the name of the OS and the space you want to use in the newly resized partition. It is really easy if you're not afraid of using the terminal, but it's really guided, but also if you're not afraid of using alpha quality software, because yes, Azahi isn't in beta or stable, it's alpha, so you will encounter some problems. Once the script has done its thing, you will need to completely shut down the Mac, then reboot it by pressing and holding the power button until you see a volume list to boot on where you can pick Asahi Linux. 
You will also have to disable system integrity protection, it's all guided with the Azahi installer, by just typing your macOS username and password, and then you will be dropped into Azahi Linux proper with a first run setup to create your user. After that, the default boot option will be Azahi, not macOS. To use macOS, you will need to restart by holding the power button until you get the volume selection and you can pick macOS. So let's look at what works out of the box on this M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Yes, Apple's naming scheme is now just as bad as Microsoft's with the Xbox. So on my MacBook Pro, a lot of stuff works perfectly without anything to do on my part. The keyboard is recognized perfectly with the function keys mapped to some KDE features, like the search key opening KRunner or the mission control key opening the KDE overview. Keyboard backlight also works fine out of the box. The touchpad is also fully functional in tap to click with the normal click with the usual vibration that Mac touchpads have and two finger scrolling and tapping also works. The display is recognized with its full resolution, although it doesn't support the high refresh rate that it should have, it's locked to 60 Hz. Wi-Fi also worked immediately, but audio didn't, with the default audio interface being turned off and turning it on didn't do anything for me. Bluetooth also works perfectly, charging the laptop as well, and in terms of ports, the USB-C ports do work, but only as USB-C and USB 2 for now, not USB 3 and not Thunderbolt either. So basically you get the same transfer speeds as what Apple gives you on the iPhone. If it's fine for a phone, it's fine for a computer, isn't it? Now, this won't prevent you from plugging in some peripherals like a USB stick, but you won't get charging and plugging into a display at the same time with one cable, for example. External displays also do not work through these ports. The display lights up, it detects something is there, but no image ever carries through. The SD card slot also works, but the HDMI port doesn't. The audio jack is also not supported, but it's probably because the whole audio system isn't. Also, the webcam won't work, the onboard mic is detected but doesn't record anything, and sleep doesn't completely work. It can go into S2 idle, but not deep sleep. So while the device will use less power than if it was on, it won't save as much power as in macOS, and the support is a bit broken, for example if you have USB peripherals plugged in, they might not wake up with the computer. So for now you get something relatively usable, the basic hardware that you really absolutely need works, but it is not optimized and a lot of stuff isn't available yet. What's really missing for me is the speaker and audio output, I don't care about the mic, the webcam, the USB speeds, I do everything with like Wi-Fi transfers anyway, but yeah, no sound, kind of a bummer. Now what about CPU performance and battery life then? Well, it was a bit tough to test here because Geekbench's default executable for Linux isn't supported on ARM. They have an experimental version, but it failed to run for me. I managed to find a Geekbench 5 version for ARM and Linux, which ran, so I will at least have some comparison point. The M1 Pro under Linux got a single core score of 1718 and a multi-core score of 10079. Compare that to Geekbench 5 on macOS, where I got 1775 in single core and 12521 in multi-core. That's a difference of 3% for single core and 24% for multi-core in favor of macOS. Which means that CPU support on this MacBook Pro isn't bad under Linux. You do get a little bit less max performance out of it, but it's still very reasonable and it's probably due to better supporting the efficiency cores and the performance cores. In terms of battery life though, it is way worse. With YouTube videos playing in a loop in the background, Azahi barely lasted for about four and a half hours. Compare that to macOS, well, the same test gave me about 13 hours. Not exactly the same, is it? So you're still getting really solid performance and probably better performance than a lot of x86 laptops that go for the same price as these MacBook Pros, but you're still not taking full advantage of the hardware and the battery life is really bad, which is probably due to the GPU, so let's talk about that. By default, the GPU isn't really used for anything in Azahi, but the developers managed to write a fully conformant OpenGL driver for Apple Silicon, 
Something Apple themselves doesn't have, because they only support their own graphics API called Metal. Now, this driver isn't fully enabled yet by default, so you're not getting graphical acceleration in the window manager, you're not getting animations, and you're not getting GPU accelerated video decoding either. The system runs with LLVM pipe, which means software rendering. So no VSync, no smooth window movement, no Wayland, no gestures, no smooth animations, except you can very easily install the new GPU drivers with just a few command lines, and that's what I did. Now, I do get GPU acceleration, and it is now recommended that I use Wayland because the Azahi team said X11 wouldn't really be a supported target for their graphics drivers. And also, the battery life got way better thanks to these drivers. It reached 8 to 9 hours of video playback in a loop, which is much better than the 4.5 to 5 hours I got without the drivers. It's still not close to macOS, but it's very usable and also kind of better than most x86 laptops at the same price range. As per gaming, don't expect much here. Steam will not run because, well, it's ARM and Steam on Linux doesn't have an ARM version. Even if it did, there are no Vulkan drivers yet, so stuff like DXVK wouldn't work and there is no translation layer baked into Azaki to run x86 apps. You can run a few Linux native games here, like SuperTux Cart, at very good frame rates, but you won't really be gaming on this thing. I guess you could try something like Box86, but without Vulkan drivers, your gaming experience is gonna be virtually non existent. So basically, exactly like on macOS, because they don't have games either. Now, jokes aside, once there's a Vulkan driver available, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to run Steam with Box86, which seems to give decent performance and probably game on that thing, although it will always be hackier and slower than just using a supported architecture to run the same thing. Still, they've done a great job, and in day-to-day -day use, the new OpenGL drivers are actually really good for just using your desktop. Now, of course, we also need to talk about app support. Azahi Linux is basically Arch plus more drivers, so you do get the AUR and everything else Arch has access to. But the OS is running on an ARM CPU, which means some software just is not available for that architecture. There's no OBS Studio, there's no Steam. Now, to be fair, most of what I use personally was available. GIMP, GNOME Boxes, LibreOffice, Firefox, Audacity, Nextcloud, they were all there. If you use mostly free and open source software, you will probably be fine. For third-party proprietary apps that people packaged as flat packs or snaps, though, you will probably not be able to run them. Which means it is very important before you decide to jump in and buy your Mac to run Linux or switch your Mac over from macOS to Linux, just check if the software you really need runs. For me personally, no OBS Studio and no DaVinci Resolve is a deal breaker. I would never be able to run this laptop as my main device as it is right now. So the question is, is Azahi Linux ready? And that's a question that absolutely depends on your use case. If you just need the base hardware, decent performance and decent battery life, then yes, I would say go try it. It is still alpha quality, so you will face some problems. Not all apps have an ARM version, so you won't be able to run everything, and GPU support is really bare bones, even with the new drivers. There's the lack of audio, the lack of webcam, the lack of the microphone on the laptop, which are big bummers, but it's currently being worked on. And the lack of external display support is also a deal breaker for me personally. But if you don't care about any of this and you're not a gamer, then yes, Azahi Linux in a day-to-day -day use case is fine already. But also, Macs are very expensive. And if you want to take advantage of every single hardware feature you paid for to the maximum of its abilities, then no, Azahi Linux is not ready yet. Your battery life won't be as good. You won't have access to a lot of GPU-related stuff. Some of the ports and some of the hardware flat out doesn't work including Thunderbolt, which is the main advantage of these devices. It all depends on your own use case, basically. So I hope this video gave you a good look at what Azahi Linux can and can't do currently. For me personally, it wouldn't work. There's too many stuff missing, too much of the hardware isn't working, and some software I absolutely need just doesn't run on ARM. 
but for you it might be different. Now, if you want to see how well Fedora Azahi runs on the same device, leave me a comment in the description below. And in the meantime, I'll leave you with this segue to our sponsor. If you're looking for a device to run Linux specifically, you might be better off looking at our sponsor, Tuxedo. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed and all the hardware has been picked specifically because it runs well under Linux. And if there are a few kinks to iron out, they generally submit patches upstream to fix all of these issues. They have a big range of devices that should fit every need and every price point. If you wanted something like a Mac, you can find stuff that is just as well built and a little bit less expensive. And if you want an Ultrabook, a NUC, a Tower, a gaming laptop, they also have all of this. All the laptops can be opened, repaired and upgraded, including the RAM, the SSD, and also the battery and sometimes even the wireless card. And there are a lot of customization options. You can bring your own keyboard layout. You can have your own logo engraved on the lid of the laptop. You can change the look of the super key. It's just very customizable. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it, don't play around with a Mac. If you really need something productive, click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo laptop or desktop. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, there's that dislike button as well. And just leave me a comment down below to tell me why. And if you want to support the channel, I left plenty of links in the description below just for that LibraPay, Patreon, YouTube, thanks, PayPal, whatever. You know how this works. So thanks for watching. And I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.